Within array normalization techniques are important for uh, those experiments in which we are using those differential dyes. So since we are using those uh, different colors and there is a tendency of different RNA uh, to bind uh, differently uh, with uh, either of these uh, two dyes. So we need to do this uh, normalization as far as uh, these uh, uh, data is concerned. So biases are uh, because of as we said two dye systems CY3 and CY5 labels they differentially incorporated at different upper denses. Uh, CY3 and 5 have different emission or response to lasers at different upper denses. So that is another factor that can disrupt your signal intensity or your uh, count of those intensities and later on your results. CY3 and CY5 emissions uh, differentially measured at different intensities so it can also be an important aspect. The intensities can vary between regions different regions so it is uh, not horizontal when scanned so when you scan them uh, they are not like in the way the experiment is performed so uh, different regions uh, they might affect or might uh, reflect different intensities. Okay, so uh, while you are selecting those genes for in order to do those microarray experiments, the set of genes uh, must be identified. You might have all genes on the array. So it assumes that small proportion of genes are expected to be differentially expressed. So you take all those genes, but within those genes, uh, you have a smaller proportion that is the differentially expressed. And there is a symmetry in the expression of the up and down regulated genes and remaining genes uh, which are not differentially expressed so they have a constant expression so those constantly expressed are housekeeping genes they are expected to have a constant expression across a variety of conditions so we take all those genes then we need to identify the genes which are housekeeping genes so which are always there and whose expression is a constant expression so we need to have them in the experiment so housekeeping genes uh, they normally tend to be highly expressed and they may not be the representatives of other genes of interest so those housekeeping genes uh, there must be some technique in order to you know uh, avoid them or in order to you know remove them since they are taking your bulk of your resources they are highly expressed and most of your energies are going in detecting them whereas uh, they are of little use since uh, your interest may be in most of these experiments is uh, what genes are differentially expressed. So for example, you give a treatment and then you compare with a control, but you find nothing in case of these housekeeping genes. So in generally like 10 to 20 percent genes are differentially expressed. So what about those remaining 80 percent? Obviously they are taking, consuming your bulk of resources. We can have controls. For example, we can have uh, spiked controls or titration series of control sequences. So what we do over here is, we did take synthetic or foreign organism DNA sequences and we put them into messenger RNAs at equal amount and then we can have equal red and equal green intensity. So in this way you can control those biasness towards attaching with those uh, differential dyes. In the second scenario, you can take the spots of the same sequence at different concentrations and then your red and green intensities uh, they are expected to be equal across different concentrations. So you can have um, different concentrations of the sequences and then you can see the red and the green how they are behaving in those different intensities and in those different concentrations. So where you can try to neutralize the effect of those dye biasnesses. So all methods assume that most of the genes are not expressed otherwise uh, there is another uh, thing what we can do over here is uh, we can use a reference uh, um, sample and we can control or we can have the spike sequences as we have seen earlier. MA or RI plot is the scatter plot of log ratio against average of log intensities of each features. Uh, these are really important plots once you take those your RNAs you put them on slides and then you count their intensities and after that you get those intensities and convert them into the log ratios and then we take the average of the intensities for each feature and you plot them so we call it as an MA or RI plot. So each point on graph MA graph is a feature. We have X coordinate where on the X axis we put the average intensity of CY3 and CY5 
why is the log of cy5 by cy3 ratio so we take average intensities of both of them and plot them against the log of their fold change we call this as uh, fold change also we'll talk about that when we talk these differential gene expression studies how many folds how many times the expression goes higher in cy5 versus cy3 so basically geometrically it's related to the log of cy5 against the log of cy3 uh, in the scatter plots so here is the ma plot so we have m uh, which is log 2 of r minus log 2 of g r is red and g is uh, green we can take uh, a as log both log 2 plus actually the average of both of them so we take m on our uh, y axis we take uh, a on our x axis and in the middle we have a line that separates both of them so you have a zero line so in ideal situation we want that our data points should be close to this zero line uh, we perform regression of those log ratios on the average uh, log intensities and then for each feature the normalized log ratio is the observed m or log ratio uh, value minus the predicted m value so here is those ma plots for five arrays uh, before normalization uh, we see that patterns are kind of you know uh, most of them uh, they are away from that zero line we normalize them and here our ma plots are quite you know fair here we have the distributions centered around these zero lines there is another normalization procedure called as lowest normalization locally weighted scatter plot smoothing we fit a smooth curve uh, we use robust local linear fit so here since i'm talking about linear regression or those kind of intensive statistical tests so you fit up a line across these data points and then we can try to you know bring them close or minimum we try to do some transformation so that they should come close to that uh, best fit line so we see in this section that biases in the and the experimental errors uh, they must be removed and most of within array normalizations are for spotted uh, two die experiments